I want to be with you forever. Please marry me. I promise I will make you happy. These were the words my husband said when he proposed. Tears welled up in my eyes, blurring my vision. His words touched my heart so deeply. I felt enveloped by immense happiness, confident that together we could overcome any challenge. We would support each other no matter what, without a doubt. Then one day, he shattered this image. I've fallen for someone else. I want a divorce. What? Who could have imagined that my husband of six years would suddenly ask for a divorce? My name is Angela. My husband Ken and I have been married for six years. It was just recently that we celebrated our anniversary at our favorite restaurant, toasting with fine wine. So why this? Wait, just wait a second. You've fallen for someone else? And you want a divorce? You're joking, right? I couldn't comprehend what was happening and half smiled in disbelief. But his expression was dead serious. Nothing like his usual calm demeanor. Are you serious? I wouldn't joke about something like this. His voice was colder than I'd ever heard. But why? We have been getting along without any big fights. Why now? Tears started to well up. Had I been oblivious to the fact that he had found someone else, thinking we had a good marriage? I want kids. Huh? Kids? I can't have them with you, you know. I want to divorce quickly and remarry her. He's right. I couldn't have children. We discovered this three years into our marriage. Despite our normal intimate life, there were no signs of pregnancy. After test, it turned out I was the reason. I was so shocked that I even considered divorce. I thought it would be better for him to be happy with someone else since I couldn't give him a family. But he had reassured me back then. I married you because I love you. Just being together is enough. Kiss or not. I stopped blaming myself, saved by his words, and decided to enjoy our life together. I was so glad I married him. But why now? But you said you would be happy together, even without kids, remember? I appealed with a tearful voice. But his expression remained unchanged. I only said that as a friend. Who wouldn't want kids? I'm tired of being with you. His disdain was apparent. A stark contrast to the man he once was. Tired of being with me. What does that even mean? I've tried to build a happy life despite everything. I wanted to scream at him, but his words were true in a way. But it's true, as he said, that I have been forcing him to endure this situation because of me. He must have struggled too, in his own way. I couldn't believe his comforting words were lies. I believed every word he said. I couldn't bring myself to blame him completely. Maybe it was my fault that he became this cold after all. He opened his mouth and told me as I was deep in thought. Just give me the divorce. I've already promised to marry her. You are just in the way now. In the way? Isn't that a bit harsh? I felt insulted by his words, in the way, despite feeling somewhat guilty before. Why? It's the truth. I've spent six years with a wife who can't conceive. You should be thanking me. He said this, conveniently excusing himself from any blame. 
Seeing this dark side of him that I had never seen before made me feel sick to my stomach. So you really felt that way? All your reassurances were lies. Duh, obviously. I haven't been happy since finding out about your infertility. Every day was hell. I just wanted to divorce. At that moment, I felt my feelings for him cooling rapidly. His bland words made me realize he had no intention of repairing our marriage. He only cared about his future with his lover. Everything suddenly seemed ridiculous. Fine. If that's how you feel, we can get a divorce. But just so you know, I expect you to pay alimony. He responded to my proposal with scorn. What? Alimony? I should be the one getting it. Six years with an infertile wife. You've wasted six years of my life. And now you want alimony? At that moment, I felt a surge of anger from deep within. Just because I can't have children doesn't mean he has a right to say such things. We are still legally husband and wife. There's no excuse for his affair. My disgust for him turned into hatred. I wasn't going to suffer through this alone. I refused to let things go his way. I was going to make him pay. Once I made up my mind, things moved quickly. First, I needed evidence of his affair. I couldn't file for divorce until I had it. I turned back to my husband. I'm okay with a divorce, but wait two weeks. There are things I need to prepare since this is so sudden. Fine, but only two weeks. After that, we are definitely getting a divorce. He replied impatiently and left the house. Later, I packed my things and visited the detective agency during a work break. I hired them to gather as much evidence of his affair as possible for a week. My husband, thinking I had accepted the divorce, often visited his mistress' apartment. They met up daily for work and shopped the famous brand stores, coming out with numerous bags. The shops were all women's brands, likely him splurging on her. Photos capture them both smiling and him looking infatuated. The agency told me they dined at expensive restaurants nightly, with my husband paying every time. His reckless spending was astounding. Where did he get all that money from? He was stingy with me, but generous with his mistress. However, this resulted in more evidence than I imagined, and the agency found it easy to gather. A few days after the two-week period, I received a call while filling out the divorce papers. Hello? It's me. Did you sign the divorce papers? Hurry up! His tone was condescending. I'm doing it as we speak. I will file them later. He sighed heavily and said, You are always so slow. Pack your things and leave quickly. That place will be a love nest for me and her. Take all your stuff with you. He hung up without waiting for a response. A love nest for him and her? I thought, amused. He lived there with me all this time. I will take everything, don't worry. My revenge will be complete. I was frighteningly enjoying my revenge on him. I wouldn't turn back now. I was determined to make him suffer. I signed the divorce papers and was packing when I heard some noise from the front door. You're still here? It was Ken. Why are you here? He smirked triumphantly. 
I've been living at her place. I only brought a few things with me. I came to get more clothes. Perfect timing. I have something for you to sign. I handed him a document. What's this? I've been consulting a lawyer because I don't want us to continue arguing. It's a legal agreement about post-divorce matters. Read it carefully and sign. Despite telling him to read it carefully, he just casually and carelessly signed it right there, obviously annoyed by the hassle. And he tossed the paper at me. You're so annoying. I won't bother you again, even without these stupid documents. He muttered that and retreated to his room to get his things. I did warn him to read it carefully. I muttered with a smirk. I knew he'd likely skim over it, but I never imagined it would work out this well. I cheerfully continued packing up every single one of my belongings in the house. The next day, I submitted the divorce papers and had a moving company take my stuff to my parents' house. I planned to live alone eventually, but for now, I'd stay with them. I had already explained the divorce to them. Both my parents were furious at first, but they praised my plan when I told them. A few days later, Ken called sooner than I expected. Hey, what the hell is this? He shouted over the phone as soon as I answered. Well, hello to you too. Quiet, why is the house empty? He was panicking, angry and upset, spewing nonsense. I patiently explained to him. Why? You told me to take all my stuff, didn't you? So I did just that. But that's ridiculous. There is not a single piece of furniture or appliance left. We bought those with our savings. He was ranting, out of breath. It seemed like he was conveniently altering his memory. So I explained it to him again. What are you talking about? Everything that house was bought with my money. Have you forgotten how you were fired and we lived off my income when we first got married? He fell silent, remembering. Right after we got engaged and moved in together, he lost his job. So I bought all the necessary furniture and appliances. I even paid the mortgage until he found a new job. He seemed to remember and suddenly lost his earlier bluster. What's wrong? Gone quiet all of a sudden? Just remember, did you? Oh, and by the way, the condo is part of the asset division. So if you ever sell it, remember you owe me half the selling price. What? What is this all about? You didn't say anything about this. You signed it yourself, remember? I told you to read it carefully, but you were too lazy, and that's why this happened. I signed it? You mean that paper I signed? This bonehead finally realized. The paper he signed contained many important clauses, including property division, and suing both him and his mistress for alimony. I explained this to him again, and he was speechless, sobbing over the phone. Why are you crying? You the one who cheated, have the nerve to cry? I'm the one who's been hurt here. But this is too much. What have I done to deserve this? I was utterly disgusted with his inability to understand his own wrongdoing. I never realized he was such a pitiful person. You are really pathetic, you know that? Thanks for initiating the divorce. It was the right decision. I feel so much better now. I hung up on him, blocked his number, 
and made sure he couldn't contact me again. Through my lawyer, I proceeded to sue him and his mistress for alimony. Surprisingly, they broke up quickly. The mistress apparently had another main partner and was just using my husband for money. The mistress, who had treated him like a mere cash cow, was furious when I demanded alimony from her. Why should I pay alimony? He was just a fling. She grudgingly paid and dumped him soon after. I never expected such a turn of events. It was a sweet victory for me. Kalma is a bitch. My ex-husband, dumped by the woman he planned to remarry, was hit with a double whammy of alimony and emotional distress. He even took a leave of absence from work. Later, he called my parents' house. I've decided to sell the condo. I will give you your share. I was wrong. Please let's start over. Of course, I have no interest in reconciling. Please don't contact me again. If you do, I will call the police. Goodbye. I ended the call and blocked his number at my parents' house too. It turns out he was in debt from splurging on his mistress and is now being chased by creditors. No wonder he was so extravagant with her. Considering the amount he spent on luxury brands and fancy restaurants, it was obvious his salary alone wouldn't cover it. But to think he went into debt to spoil his mistress, his affair, divorce, and that became office gossip, and now he is being pressured to resign. Do I feel sorry for him? Not at all. It was a perfect revenge. I have no regrets. He brought this on himself. From now on, I will live for my own happiness. I vow to myself.